Welcome back to my little shop here. Many of you have asked me the same question I've had myself for the last little while. Can I paint this true flat plywood? I can now, today on LaserNug. So if you've been following the channel, I actually started using this true flat plywood as kind of a substitute for MDF or different types of plywoods, I don't know, four or five months ago now. And I really love the product. It's coming in really handy and much more cost effective on a number of different things that I've been making. You'll recall I started using it for my Christmas ornaments back late last year. I've been working on a number of different Easter ideas, which I've gotten some great designs off of the internet. And I've used different types of materials, whether it's plywood, MDF that I've had to paint, or a lot of true flat lately. And you'll recall we just issued out a video a couple of weeks ago where we did this bunny ornament or door hanger out of nothing but true flat. It turned out great. But if you work with wood a lot, you'll know that whenever you have a finished product such as the true flat, which has an engineered veneer and it has an acrylic finish on it, general principle or, or experience has kind of taught us that if you've got a finish on a wood product and you want to paint it, you need to sand that finish off first. So instead, a lot of us, I think, use MDF as I've done here a number of times. You'll substitute the MDF for the parts you need to paint, and then you're gonna to have to prime it at least twice. You know, sometimes you shape it with your Dremel tool, do whatever else you'd like to do to the shape, but you've got time and materials involved in doing all of those things. Until I just found out that True Flat just introduced a new product called True Flat Paint. It looks just like the other True Flat plywood pieces, same size, it's got a consistent MDF core, similar to the others, as well as a consistent thickness, and of course, it's flat, but instead of having an engineered face with an acrylic finish, it's primed. It's ready to paint. I just had to try it out because I love trying out new products, especially if they may save me some money or time. So we're going to give it a shot today, except I'm doing something a little different. Usually before I do videos, I'll try out whatever product or whatever design or different type of creation that I want to make. And after I've kind of perfected it a bit, then I do a video on it. This time I'm doing it with you for the first time. I haven't used it yet, but I'm gonna take this Easter door hanger and instead of using MDF or different types of woods, priming them and painting them, I'm gonna take the colored pieces and I'm gonna substitute it with this true flat paint. And we're gonna paint it up, see how well the paint adheres and how nice it looks afterwards. So let's get her done. So for this Easter door hanger, I'm gonna be using four different sheets of the true flat that's already pre-finished. I'm going to use walnut. I'm going to give oak a try. Usually I use maple because I like maple, but this oak looks pretty cool, so we'll give it a whirl. White for the bunny, black for the eyes. I've got my 3M adhesive, 467 MP, and instead of using MDF and having to prime it, I'm going to give this True Flat paint product a try, and we'll see how well it does on the painted parts of the door hanger. And on today's video, I won't take you through 15 minutes of laser work, but I'll give you some shots and some highlights. We're going to throw our adhesive on certain pieces. We're going to get it cut in the bolt. I always like to mask my lighter pieces, like the white. It does clean off well, but because I use 3M, I also increase my power, which sometimes gives me more burning or scorching, and this just saves me from a lot of work. And then I'm gonna grab this True Flat paint. We're gonna paint it up with a few different colors. We'll see how well it takes. We'll put our project together, and we'll take a look at the door hanger at the end. Let's jump into Lightburn. So I've pulled up my production file. And this is a file or an approach I started several months ago, which seems to be working out well for me. Once I've done my prototypes or my dry runs and tested different types of material, I'll create what I call a production file where I have all of my sizes, shapes, my layers, everything all placed out around the work area so that as I make production or I do a number of signs or I start to do volume, all I have to do is grab each piece, bring it into my work, cut it, put the next piece in, and if I need to do multiple units, of course, I now have the ability to pull them in and see how many I can fit on each sheet. I also leave little notes to myself so I remember which types of products, whether it's MDF, craft plywood, plywood, true flat in this case, what type of product I use. And I've got my options here, of course, and each of these are grouped pretty much based on color. So I know that all of my white pieces are here, all of my, currently I used to use linen or MDF, 
Now I'm gonna try this true flat paint for these painted pieces here. So I'm just gonna come back up here. I'm gonna check that my settings for my material library are accurate or correct for true flat. And then I'm gonna grab my pieces and start cutting. Although I know I still have a lot to learn, what I am finding very beneficial and much more efficient is when you're able to create a design, whether it's a door hanger, ornament, a sign of some sort, and you're able to use the same type of material with the same consistency, especially from the same supplier for all pieces, it's just so much more efficient because you're setting up one set of settings for your engrave, your score, and your cut, and you're just basically moving your pieces in, sending them to the bolt, and just cutting without having to go through each piece with different types of material and changing your settings for cut and engrave and score based on that different type of material. It's just literally, it's plug and play kind of. You set your settings in once, and all I do is I just keep putting in a different color of true flat, and I just push start. And from the laser's perspective, I autofocus once because they're all consistent thicknesses, and I use the same lens for everything. So I don't have to swap out lenses for different pieces. All my pieces are cut now, laser is shut off. I have my true flat paint pieces here, and I'm gonna do two things since of course we're testing for the first time. I'm gonna take my carrot pieces, and I'm gonna do those in a Rust-Oleum two times, and I'm gonna take my inner ear pieces as well as the nose, and I'm gonna use an acrylic paint instead, just so we can see if there's any difference between the paint on either of these pieces. Let's get her done. Also, hey, for you folks, if you're kind of new to this, I picked up this little cookie sheet grate for, I think it was a dollar at the dollar store, but this is my latest little invention here. Nothing fancy or anything, but I just took a 14 inch, or I think it's an 18 inch door hanger. I just got this piece of MDF circular from Michaels, but I've got it spinning now because I went on Amazon and you can get just the frame or the mechanism for the Lazy Susan and I think it was like $7. And I just put a small base under it so that now when I'm painting, I can easily spin this as I'm painting pieces. So we're gonna do our leaves in green. I know, very original. And I'm gonna do my carrots in orange. Normally with MDF, just like you folks, I put at least two coats of primer on there. And of course, sometimes you have to sand it afterwards before you paint, because you often get that kind of gravelly look in some areas where the paint's not totally flat. Good stuff. Now let's grab our orange. So while I let that paint dry, we're gonna grab my acrylics and we're gonna hit the ears and the nose. All right, let's put it together. And now let's see how those true flat paint pieces turned out. So hey, sorry, <laughs> this is the next day. I had to stop filming yesterday because we got so much snow, I had to get out there and start shoveling. But hey, there's my door hanger, it's all finished up. And as you might expect, primed MDF, 
paints up really nice with both acrylic or if you're using a Rust-Oleum or a spray paint type of product. The colors all came up pretty vibrant. I put two light coats of the Rust-Oleum. I always like to do light coats. And I did three very light coats of that acrylic on the ears and the nose. Turned out great. It cost me $2.90 more for the same size sheet and the same size MDF. That's not primed. So for me, that's about 48 cents more per sign in cost. But I think the time savings, plus the fact that I'm not using that $17 a can primer from Rust-Oleum, as well as I don't need to sand, I think that way offsets the 48 cents more that I pay for it. It's primed, so it's laser right to paint booth. For me, that's a winner. Well, thank you so much for sticking around again today. I hope you found it helpful or at least a little informative. Have a great week out there. Please be kind, and I'll see you in the next one. I'm Gord Potter, and you've been watching Laser Nug. Cheers.